Hey, John, ARM just revealing its F1 as it plans for a public offering in early September. The company intends to trade on the NASDAQ under ticker name ARM. ARM, no surprise there. The lead bankers are, and this is in alphabetical order, Barclays, Goldman, JP Morgan, and Mizuho. Now, ARM is a chip designer known as the Switzerland of chips. It both designs its own chips that power the majority of smartphones around the world, but it also works with mega cap customers in terms of building their own in-house silicon. Revenue during its last fiscal year was $2.7 billion. That is a decline year over year. Net income in fiscal 23 was $524 million. That's also lower than it was in 2022. Remember, Arm was bought by SoftBank and taken private back in 2016 for $31 billion. It was last valued at $64 billion in a private transaction. That was back in 2019, according to sources. Now, it has been reported that they're looking at a valuation of somewhere between 60 and 70 billion on public markets when it does file to go public. We'll continue to go through this more than 200 page document. We'll look at risk factors, competition, key stakeholders, and bring it to you as we get it. But John, this is a big deal. This is a big one. This would be the biggest IPO of the year, and it could open the window for other tech IPOs to follow. I think it used to be ARMH, if I recall, back when it was public I think the first you're right. time. Changed hands a lot of times. I mean, what do you see as the, the big question for them going forward in their growth trajectory? I mean, I imagine it's got to be AI and how much of their IP they can get into that mix since the, the traditional CPU is less important than the yeah. accelerators now. I think that's exactly it. We know what has happened in the tech space and the chip space in particular this year. It's really had this AI underpinning this boom. And ARM is going to make the argument, they're trying to make it in this document, that they are AI-centric, not just AI-adjacent. That's what Masasan has been saying over the last few months as he has focused on bringing this company public. So, you know, we're at this show-me moment, John, as you know very well, where investors, they want to see that the revenue related to AI is already there. The fact that revenue declined in its last fiscal year, year over year, Perhaps not a positive sign, but again, it was last valued at $64 billion. That would be at the higher end of that range, and that was, what, four years ago. So we'll have to see what the market thinks this is worth. But again, AI is going to be so important because the majority of its revenue is certainly tied to the global smartphone market, which is in decline. But AI is this powerful force that seems to have investors' imagination right now. So if it can capitalize and prove to investors that it is going to be a big beneficiary of this shift, not to the extent, certainly, of NVIDIA, but at least a player in this, then it could reach sort of could reach those valuations. Yeah, you want to see them able to make the, the argument that their IP is getting greater share as AI gets bigger. We'll see what they can do. Dee, thank you. And arms right. filing just now, uh, just one of the green shoots emerging in the deal space. Leslie Picker has that story. Leslie? Hey, John. Yeah, this is exciting. Signs of life and IPOs. You've got Arm and Instacart also expected uh, gearing up for its public debut. In M&A, you've got effectively a bidding war for U.S. Steel and now hedge fund uh, sculptor capital as well. And in activism, you've got Starboard engaged in Blumen Brands. So clearly it's welcome news for a market that's been effectively dormant for a year and a half now. North American mergers and acquisitions came in at $960 billion during the first six months of the year, according to PitchBook. That is about 16% below the pre-pandemic first half average. And IPOs didn't fare any better. Despite well-publicized debuts by, say, Kava and Kenview, U.S.-listed IPOs are raking in about a tenth each quarter than they did in 2021, according to KPMG. And while the engines appear to be turning back on, especially uh, just a few moments ago, it's not quite full speed ahead. Bankers and other sources I talk with say that a lot of companies are effectively in wait and see mode. They want to assess some of the larger IPOs in the pike. They want to see how ARM does. And then they want to get a little more comfortable doing deals, especially in this regulatory environment. That's more applicable to M&A before they do anything major. But as the prospect of a recession seems Further and further away, consensus really kind of pricing in a, a soft landing or no landing at this point in time, uh, then you could start to see more activity, particularly after Labor Day.